Summertime is almost here, and that means long sunny days of solar production. But did you know that high temperatures can rob your solar panels of their best performance? In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to prevent your solar panels from overheating so you can get the absolute best summertime production. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about how you can beat the heat with solar in 2025, and specifically how you can get the best performance out of your solar panels and prevent your solar panels from overheating. So first, let's talk about how temperature affects solar panel performance. Now, solar panels, just like most other electrical equipment, as the temperature rises, the efficiency and the performance goes down. And so you'll see that solar panels are rated with what's called a temperature coefficient. And what the temperature coefficient is, is it's the amount of power production that is lost for each degree Celsius that the solar panel has to operate above the ideal temperature. Uh, and of course, for standard test conditions, the ideal temperature is 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, it's important to note that solar panels are rated based on two sets of conditions. You have your STC rating. STC stands for standard test conditions, which is basically perfect ideal laboratory conditions. Then you also have your NMOT rating, which stands for normal module operating temperature, which is a more accurate approximation of real world conditions that the solar panel will experience, meaning higher temperature and less than ideal sunlight. You see, when, when solar panels are flash tested in the laboratory, the sunlight is applied directly perpendicular to the solar cells. So that cell is gonna capture the maximum amount of sunlight. Uh, and of course, the temperature is kept cool at that 25 degrees Celsius level. So that's about the ideal best conditions that you can ever expect out of that solar panel. But the reality is in the real world, that solar panel is not gonna be operating in those conditions for a majority of the time. I mean, just take into account the path that the sun is going to take throughout the day as it traverses the sky throughout the day, the sun is not gonna be hitting, those photons are not gonna be hitting the cell directly perpendicular. There's gonna be a slight angle either way, which means you're gonna have some loss by just some of the sunlight being reflected off. But particularly in the summer months, you're also gonna have significant losses because of the extreme high temperatures that are typical for rooftops. Now, especially for those of you who are watching in states like uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Florida, uh, you know it's, it's hot enough on ground level during the middle of summertime, but during, during the summer months on the rooftop, you could see temperatures of 150, even 160 degrees Fahrenheit or more, and that can have a serious negative impact on your solar panel production if you don't plan properly and use the proper equipment. So one of the things you can do to maximize your high temperature performance is to install solar panels that use heterojunction technology. Now, heterojunction technology is a combination of amorphous silicon or, or thin film silicon with crystalline silicon. Uh, and the result is a higher efficiency solar cell that has a lower temperature coefficient. Now, again, the temperature coefficient, that's the percentage of energy lost or the percentage of power that's lost for each degree that the solar panel has to operate above the ideal temperature. So by installing a solar panel or using a solar panel with a low temperature coefficient, you're going to get more total energy harvested out of the lifetime of this system, especially if you live in an environment that has extreme high heat during the summer. So again, in the US, that's definitely the southern states, uh, but also even the mid-Atlantic states like Virginia and North Carolina, you can see rooftop temperatures of over 150 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime. And that's actually a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, REC. If you're looking to get the maximum performance for your residential solar and battery storage system, then you need to take a look at the new REC Alpha Pure RX solar modules. REC solar cells are built using heterojunction technology, which is a combination of crystalline silicon and amorphous or thin film silicon. The result is a solar module with extremely high efficiency and industry low degradation rate, all while remaining price competitive. The low temperature coefficient and extra horizontal supports keeps the solar panel performing near peak power even in extreme weather conditions. REC stands behind its award-winning modules with a 25-year ProTrust warranty that covers power, product, and labor. So if you're serious about becoming energy independent, and you wanna get the best performance from your solar array, then tell your installer to use REC Alpha Pure RX. 
The 450 and 460 watt modules are available now at your local solar distributor. Thank you REC for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now speaking of ambient temperature and how temperature affects solar panels, one thing you might want to consider is ground mounting your solar panels as opposed to roof mounting your solar panels. Now ambient temperatures on the ground tend to be a lot cooler, especially in the summer months, than what you experience on the rooftop. Now, a lot of solar installers don't like to install ground mounted panels because typically it's gonna be more expensive and it's gonna take more time and tie up the work crew longer to do a ground mount system than a roof mount system. Uh, and, and of course, the reason for that is that with a ground mount system, you have to build your structural support from scratch, which means you're typically assembling this metal lattice, you've got concrete anchors that have to go down underground, and then you rack your solar panels on top of that. Whereas with a roof mount solar system, you're using the roof rafters or whatever the roof support is as your structural support. You can just rack on top of that. So typically for the installer, a roof mount system is going to be faster and more efficient, and they'll typically gonna be able to offer that to you at a lower price. However, if we're looking at it just theoretically, theoretically you're gonna get the better performance with ground mounted solar panels that have open air, so those cells can cool in the back, there's, there's air able to flow through in the back, and you're not having to experience those higher temperatures that you'll see on the rooftop. And, and you know, when we look at solar panel performance, the question we really wanna be asking ourselves is, what is the total energy harvest over the lifetime of the system? A lot of times when you see a solar proposal or a solar quote, you see a certain number of watts, and that watts really represents instantaneous max power, under perfect ideal conditions. But that doesn't really mean anything in terms of energy savings or payback. The, the real question you wanna ask is, how much total energy am I going to get over the lifetime of that system? Um, what, what's the energy I'm gonna get in year one? And a lot of times the proposal will show you what the energy forecast is for year one. But really what you're looking at, if you look at this as a full 25 year investment over the entire lifetime of the system, is what is the total energy produced over the lifetime of the system. And that's gonna be affected by your instantaneous max power in watts, but it's also gonna be affected by factors like your temperature coefficient, right? How much energy are you potentially losing based to the solar panel overheating? Uh, but it also would take into account factors like degradation rate. Now, degradation rate is basically, you know, as the solar panel ages, each year as that solar panel ages, it's gonna lose a small percentage of its performance as well uh, just due to the, the solar panel aging. Uh, and that number, we call that the degradation rate. So the degradation rate is the percentage of power output that is lost each year as the solar panel ages. Now, a standard solar panel could lose about half a percent per year of its rated power, and generally will guarantee you around 80 to 85% of the initial power uh, out in year 25, which is the terminal year of the warranty. Uh, but a premium solar panel like the REC Alpha Pure RX that we looked at earlier is going to have a much lower degradation rate. So the, the REC Alpha Pure RX has a degradation rate of only a quarter of a percent per year, which means that they guarantee to have at least 92% of initial rated power uh, out in year 25. And again, all that translates into more total energy harvest over the lifetime of the system, which is the real question that you want to be asking yourself when you're considering a solar investment. So this has been a discussion on how to beat the heat with solar in 2025. Uh, of course, we recommend the REC Alpha Pure RX. In terms of residential solar panels, panels that you would install on your home that give you that all black aesthetic, they're gonna give you high power output, high efficiency, low temperature coefficient, and low degradation rate. And again, all of that translates to more total lifetime production out of that solar system. Uh, hey folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your recommendations so you can stay up to date with everything. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner and if you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe you already have a price quote, you just need to get a comparison quote, if you want to take a look at REC solar panels or, or frankly any of the leading solar panels, uh, as always, just feel free to reach out to us on the link below here. You can set up a call with a solar surge expert 
uh, or just use the free online calculator tool so you can see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. But that pretty much does it for today's presentation. We're talking about how to beat the heat in 2025. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.